We won't insult you by going over all the undead killing rules. Let's aim for the head and look at the best zombie games to play in 2021 and a few extra for your diary. The stratospheric success of The Walking Dead TV series more than a decade ago reignited the world's love for shuffling brain eaters. Robert Kirkman's graphic novel continued the horrific story from the classic Romero era, and the TV adaptation set the world desperately recreating variations on an undead theme. Games were no stranger to zombies, hello Left 4 Dead, but the intensity of brain-busting media only increased. That's why we love collecting the best zombie games you should be playing. A bit like ammunition and supplies whenever you reach a safe room, right? Subscribe to the channel to make sure you've saved your game, and let's take a look at the best zombie games to play right now and some to look out for in 2021. Either way, tonight should be a party. Let's start off by basking in the joy of PlayStation exclusives making their way onto PC. Horizon Zero Dawn, Death Stranding, and most importantly for this list, Days Gone have all arrived on PC looking exceptional. Which means that when it comes to its undead nightmares known as Freakers, we can see the slathering nastiness and even higher resolution than on console. Days Gone feels a lot like a zombie-filled western as you take on the wilderness as biker Deacon St. John. Get on the bike! Well, maybe it'd be nicer if you were riding a horse, and then you wouldn't need to worry about constantly filling your bike up with fuel. But this worry is just part of what makes this adventure so compelling. Thinking about how freakers will react when the sun sets, or wondering whether you can pick off even one or two to get the upper hand, this is heart-in-mouth stuff. Oh, and the views are great for undead Instagram. The world of days gone is breathtaking. You'll be tempted to stop and look out at the lush valleys, the many rivers and waterfalls, but don't. You're not a tourist here. You're fighting to survive. World War Z was a complete surprise when it landed in 2019, and people were initially unsure, but this is a brilliant squad-based shooter with some terrifyingly innovative swarm mechanics that make survival a serious challenge. Only loosely related to the Brad Pitt movie of the same name, which in turn is only loosely related to the book of the same name, this is a compelling undead murder sim with fun traps and a lot of panic. They'll never make it! And even better, a new version is on the way this year. World War Z Aftermath is a standalone experience that includes all the original World War Z episodes, as well as a whole series of new global disaster areas such as the Vatican. If you already own World War Z though, you'll be able to upgrade for a small fee, so it's a win-win for everyone. Well, except for the zombies. Where are you hiding, creeper? It's a little short compared to the Resident Evil 2 remake from the year before, but there's still plenty to learn about Jill Valentine's attempt to escape Raccoon City in the Resident Evil 3 remake. Yes. Well, we are doing all we can. This is the realm of the nemesis, who still makes for an imposing and terrifying figure after all these years. He just doesn't have quite the same pixelated sharp edges as he did before. The desire to slaughter Jill, and therefore us, remains the same though, so I guess some things never change. The new RE engine that powers the remakes in this year's The Village once again shows off its impressively detailed chops, and there's plenty of zombie action here that still makes it worth revisiting. Just like 2, there are a number of key differences too, so don't go in thinking you know where all the are. I don't have time to explain. You gotta get out of there right now. All right, let me grab my. <laughs> if you're looking for something a little more B movie flavored, where you don't have to worry about conserving your ammo, then look no further than Zombie Army 4: Dead War. This alternative history romp sees you take on the hordes of none other than Zombie Hitler, trying to win World War II in the only way he can with occult powers and uh, zombie sharks. The main campaign is packed with all kinds of uber foes, armed with buzzsaws, enormous SMGs, and even flamethrowers, which means that once you've taken them down, you can steal their guns and get a chance to flambe staggering minions. Kill them. Kill them. There have been seasons worth of DLC with even more undead slaughter, but settling down with some friends for zombie army annihilation is gleeful co-op fun. Especially when you realize that all the X-ray kill cams of the Sniper Elite series are here too. Ooh, ow! Yeah, that would probably even hurt if you're dead already. It's time for another squad-based zomb shooter now, but we don't think you're really going to complain. Especially because Black for Blood is from Turtle Rock Studios, which is basically the majority of the developers who made Left 4 Dead. Yeah, they can only make games with four in the title. 
gosh, I know Evolve was a thing. Once again, the world has been overrun by horrific monsters, this time called the Ridden, and it's a ragtag bunch of survivors' jobs to put things right. Well, at least for a lot of bullets in monster flesh. It's a real mess out there, but that's why they call us cleaners. And my, what monsters! There are of course your regular foes, but just like Left 4 Dead, there are all manner of horrific beasties to take down, some of which are the size of small buildings. Where's the witch? Can't we just have the witch back? Anybody? What the hell? Dying Light 2 has taken its time free running into action, but all this means is that we're even more excited to return to Techland's very specific brand of apocalypse in December. The wait is over. The original sprawling open world action took place within sight of the city of Haran, but for this new adventure, we're in a fresh new world that's apparently four times bigger than the original game. Once again, we'll be making the most of parkour to keep out of tooth shot from the Grim Horde, but there are all kinds of new ways to murder zombies and chain melee attacks. The big thing this time around is that while playing Dying Light 2's co-op option, we now have to play in each other's worlds thanks to narrative choices making a real difference. The only way we can see certain outcomes will be by experiencing them in someone else's game as different factions unite and fresh monsters appear. Because, oh yes, they're here too. The deadly spawn of 15 years of mutation and evolution. <laughs> And finally, if all those official horror tie-in packs for Dead by Daylight have you hunting for even more terrifying scary movie-style experiences, look no further than the official Evil Dead the game. You know me as Ash Williams, the dude who saved the world from evil. Now, these aren't quite the same as your regular zombies, but we couldn't resist adding some deadites into this list. This isn't just a direct adaption of the original movie either. This is an experience inspired by all three boomstick-toting movies and even the exceptionally splattery Ash vs. the Evil Dead TV show, so it's looking absurdly groovy. And yes, we'll get to play as Ash with the man himself, Bruce Campbell, performing new dialogue specifically for this multiplayer co-op and PvP experience. There's no date to put in your skin-covered diary just yet, but just keep an eye out for, you know, a possessed handout. It was no accident that Ash always wore brown pants. So those are some of the best zombie murderizing games you can play right now and some blood splattered dates to put in your calendar. Let us know your zombie apocalypse plans in the comments below, drop us a like if you enjoyed the undead killing, and subscribe to Logitech G for more videos just like this one. If you do already subscribe, hit the notification bell with one of those bullets and you'll always know when another video is unleashed. Oh yeah, brother, now you're talking.